The last model we're going to go over is called the non-constant growth model. This is not a single model or a single formula, but as I said earlier, this is a framework on how to approach stock valuation. The good news is that this approach will work for all companies. In fact, the approach that we present is the basic approach that all companies use, uh, all investment bankers use to value stocks. Um, and this is more of a judgment model, a judgment approach than a simple application of a formula. And this is where the value of the human being, especially someone who's well trained in finance or business, comes in. Um, so the value principle that we have learned all along applies here. So the value of the stock, the value of the investment is equal to the present value of all its future cash flows. So the framework or the approach that we're going to use uh, focus on identifying those cash flows. So what are those cash flows? So let's take a look at that. Um, we start with determining how many years of non-constant growth uh, the company is going to experience. Uh, in a more general sense, what this means is that we, as human beings, and especially in the business world, there's a limited number of years that we can forecast with confidence what will happen. Beyond that, um, the best approach is to take a general view of the growth of a company. So remember that the growth rate that we are looking at if we try to apply the constant growth model, that's a growth rate that will, that will last forever. And forever is very, very long time. So for most of us, we can probably foresee what the growth rate is for a company over the next three to five years. But beyond that, most companies will naturally follow the general path. So this framework suggests that we're going to pick the number of years that we have good, solid information about, about a company. And then we will estimate the dividend during this year. So the non-constant years are the years that we have good information. Once those, uh, once beyond that, once beyond the uh, near future, we simply assume that the company is going to follow a long-term stable growth rate. And then we apply the constant growth model at that point in time. So let's say we have solid information for a company over the next three years. So for example, what that means is that we are going to estimate dividend in year one, dividend in year two, dividend in year three. So we have solid information for three years. Beyond that, once we, once we have used up the information we have on hand, we will apply the future growth model. So we only have three years worth of information, so we'll forecast the price of the stock at the end of year three. And what we do is we assume that starting in year four, dividend in year four, follow a constant growth rate. So follow this constant growth model. So the growth rate that we have in here, there are two types of growth rate. We have the growth rate in the first three years, so growth in year one, year two, year three, we may use it to estimate those three years worth of dividend. And then we have a normal growth rate or a long-term growth rate. And we use that growth rate to estimate dividend in year four. And then now we'll compute the present value of all the dividend and the future value of the, um, or the future price that we estimate. So in our example, that goes from year one, year two, year three because we have three years in our investment horizon. The cash flow in year one is just a dividend in year one. Cash flow in year two is just a dividend in year two. But the cash flow in year three is different. Cash flow in year three is equal to the dividend in year three plus the price of the stock in year three. And we'll discount that all back at the required return. So ours remains the same. So our discount rate is the required return. The best way to understand this approach is to go through an example. So remember the steps, and we're going to take a look at an example to apply this step. So here we have an example of a company. This company is expected to um, increase dividend by 20% in year one, and then by 15% in year two. So in other words, the growth rate in year one is 20% and the growth rate in year two is 
And after that, the company dividend will increase in the rate of 15 or 5% per year indefinitely. So indefinitely means forever. So in other words, the normal constant growth rate in the future is, is 5%. So the, the number of abnormal or non-constant growth years in this case is two because the growth in year one and year two are different from the long-term growth rate. So this is um, the first step. So remember that we first need to determine how many years of non-constant growth we have. We have two years of non-constant growth, which will enable us to find out what dividend in year one is and what dividend in year two is. And then we're gonna use that information to help us identify the future value starting in year three, I'm sorry, starting in year two, the future is that because the non-constant growth is for two years. So the future price starting in year two, which requires to forecast what dividend in year three is. So once you have established the number of non-constant growth year, the best way to solve to um, to tackle this, uh, this problem is to write down all the things that you need to estimate in the future. So the things that you need to estimate is dividend in year one, dividend in year two, and the price of the stock as of year two. So to find the dividend in year one, let's see what, uh, what information we have from this company about its dividend. It tells us that the last dividend pay was $1. So this is very useful information. So last dividend paid. So that means the $1 is dividend in year zero. So if we know that the last dividend was a dollar, we can figure out what the dividend is in year one. So we start with a dollar. We know that it's going to grow by 20%. So we'll increase that by 20%. So dividend in year one is $1.20. Once we know dividend in year one, we can find dividend in year two. So dividend in year two is $1.20 times one plus. In year two, the growth rate is 15%. So that's going to increase by 15%. Dividend in year two turns out to be $1.38. Now we need to find the price of the stock as of year two. So in order to find the price of the stock as of year two, we need dividend in year three. However, we, uh, we already know dividend in year two. So dividend in year three is dividend in year two, $1.38 times one plus the growth rate. And in year, starting in after year two, we know the growth rate is gonna be 5%. And we'll divide that by the required return. The required return, so we know what that is, that's 20%, so that's relatively straightforward, minus the growth rate. The growth rate here is very important. This is your long-term growth, growth rate, so remember that. So the long-term growth rate is 5%. So it turns out that this is, uh, you can use your calculator to find the final answer to this. It turns out that the prices of year two is $9.66. So we, it's helpful to put all of this on a timeline. So remember that the cash flow in year one is just a dividend in year one. So in year one, we get $1.20. But in year two, the cash flow in year two is the price plus the dividend. So our cash flow in year two is $1.38 plus $9.66. So our total cash flow in year two is $11.04. So that's our cash flow in year two. The required return is always the discount rate. So the required return in this case is 20%. And we can use the cash flow function in our calculator to help us solve this problem. So we'll start with the cash flow and be sure to clear your work. So second function, clear work. Again, we don't have any cash flow in year zero, so we'll go right to cash flow in year one. Cash flow in year one in this problem is $1.20, so enter for one time, and cash flow in year two is $11.04. So I'm going to press enter, go to MPV, and our interest rate in this case is 20%. We scroll down and compute MPV. So the price of the stock today, given a cash flow of $1.20 in year one and 
dollars and four cents in year two is eight dollars and sixty seven cents today. So the price today is eight dollars and sixty seven cents.